Your Excellency, uh, Mr. John Ash, President of the General Assembly, <coughs> Mr. Secretary General, distinguished ministers, excellencies, ladies and gentlemen, good morning. It was August 18, 2003, when I landed in Baghdad. I was on a UNDP mission to help Iraq set up an institution that can deal with landmines and other remnants of war that threatened Iraqi civilians. 24 hours later, I was carried away in a stretcher with multiple injuries to my face, head, and chest. We lost 22 of our dear colleagues. We still miss them sorely and painfully. Many more were injured. It was a cruel, senseless terrorist attack on the UN premises in Canal Hotel, Baghdad. Suhail, my son, who was just two years old at the time, keeps asking why someone would harm those who try to help people in need. Sadly, it has neither been the, the first nor the last attack on a civilian target. Since then, thousands of innocent civilians have lost their lives, from Algeria to Nigeria, Afghanistan, Pakistan, Jordan, Iraq, and the list goes on. Terrorists have targeted places where they could kill the maximum number of people. No one is immune from the harm and the hatred of these acts. Mr. Secretary General, as your report of April 2014 to the UN General Assembly on the UN Global Counterterrorism Strategy comprehensively outlines, terrorism is one of the greatest challenges facing the world today. It's a global challenge for the UN and its member states. It's a challenge for millions of people who go out daily to make a living and to feed their family. It's a challenge that needs to be addressed effectively. It needs collective efforts in a smart strategy. It needs synergy of action among member states, between the states and its people, and between communities. Having lived through the horrible experience, I would like to highlight that a key element of the counterterrorism strategy is indeed providing care to the victims of those affected, from medical care to social and psychological support, among others. The nature of the needs of the victims is complex and diverse, both for the short and long term. The victims cannot and must not be forgotten. From the initial medical treatment provided to me by the United States medical personnel in Baghdad, who were extraordinarily kind, professional, and supportive, to my follow-up treatment here in the US, I have been lucky to have access to some of the best medical care. However, after more than a decade, I still need to have regular medical follow-up for my right eye. One can imagine tens of thousands of those who live in situations where medical care is not so easily accessible. Today's launch of the UN Victims of Terrorism Support Portal is a very important step to empower victims. It will provide an, inf an information platform to guide those who seek and need help. Empowering the victims is indeed an effective counter-narrative counter to the terrorist propaganda. I would like to express my thanks and deepest gratitude to you, Mr. Secretary General, for your personal leadership. And I would like to applaud the work of the Office for Counterterrorism Implementation Task Force for their hard work and efforts to develop the portal. I'm honored by the opportunity to be part of its launch today with all you, with all of you. Thank you.